So many of you who are homeowners have talked to us about your struggles with skyrocketing insurance costs. We've been following the issues and search for solutions in our coverage collapse series. In the last year, we've watched citizens, the state-backed insurance companies, swell to become the largest policy writer in Florida right now. Its lower rates make it a go-to for many, even as citizens tries to move more people off its policies and into the private market. Our Matt Sesney spent the week in Tallahassee with lawmakers and leaders in the insurance industry talking to them. And today, we bring his report as he had sat down with the head of Citizens to talk about the coverage collapse and where Citizens is headed. The Capitol building here is the center of debates and struggles over insurance in Florida, but just about six miles from here is a building that is seemingly holding insurance together in Florida, the headquarters of Citizens Insurance. Tim Sirio is a CEO who knows he has a tough job. The news hasn't always been uh, welcome, but what I've tried to do is be very transparent. Inside Citizens Insurance Headquarters, Sirio is trying to make sure Florida's insurer of last resort is financially sound, as policy numbers soar with citizens rates running lower than that of private insurance companies under tight state controls. Citizens as a state insurer of last resort, and by statute, is supposed to charge actuarially sound rates and be non-competitive with the private market. If you're non-competitive, you're more expensive than the private market. But these days, Citizens is the bargain and is insuring close to 1.3 million Floridians. The growing numbers alarm Sirio, who says devastating storms could wipe out Citizens' $4 billion surplus and end up hitting all of Florida residents with a so-called hurricane tax to bail them out. I hate that term, as you can imagine. But it is the fact that it, that that power is there. Now, we think that's fundamentally unfair. This WPTV fall in our WPTV town hall, town hall residents collapse. expressed their own concerns about citizens' growth. Do you foresee that citizens is going to have to step up to cover more people? We took that question to the CEO. I believe we're starting to see that increase level off, and hopefully we will start to shrink because of takeout efforts, because of the focus on bringing new business back into Florida. The Office of Insurance Regulation has seen a lot of good activity of insurers wanting to come back into the Florida market, which is important. Tim Serio says less citizens' policies, mainly through private company takeouts, and more competition and more private insurance companies in Florida is the goal. And he says there are beginning to see signs, maybe small ones so far, that that is happening. In Tallahassee, Matt Sesney, WPTV, News Channel 5. Continuing our roundtable now with longtime News Channel 5 political analyst Brian Crowley. Brian, will the insurance issue, the affordability issues here, be a potent issue at the ballot box this year? Certainly did not hurt Governor DeSantis in his runaway win last year for the governor's mansion. Well, I don't think the full impact of the insurance crisis had hit yet, and I think people are feeling it mm -hmm. in brutal ways for some homeowners. And yeah, if there isn't a, some kind of rapid decrease in insurance cost, uh, I think it could have an impact on Republican candidates uh, in this coming election. Not on national level, maybe not even necessarily uh, I, I'm on a congressional level, but I think on state legislative mm -hmm. races, maybe some local races, you could start having an impact. Look, it's the job of the legislature to fix this problem. They haven't really fixed it. They've taken some actions last year that helped the insurance companies but uh, it's sort of like the economy of the economy of the economy is the number one issue. If gas is $5 a gallon, Joe Biden's in trouble in November. If insurance rates are going through the roof, people running in Florida are going to be in trouble. So uh, they need to come up with a solution, but there is no easy way out. Look at the session and the big issues as you see them, a longtime veteran of covering the political scene in Tallahassee. There's been suggestion that it'll be a, quote, tamer, quieter session with the governor busy on a national campaign trail. Having said that, frame it for our viewers. Well, I, I, there's always, you know, that outside uh, backbench candidate, um, representative or senator who offers up some crazy bill that's going to change the world that never gets anywhere and that tends to get a little too much publicity early on. I think one of the most interesting things is that Senate President Kathleen Passamoto has recognized that going along with the enormous growth we've had in this state, there is a shortage of doctors, there's a shortage of nurses. We haven't brought in enough doctors and nurses. She's looking at programs to create more residency opportunities for budding doctors and 
you know, anybody who's tried to make an appointment with a doctor lately knows mm -hmm. that it sometimes takes months to get an appointment, especially if it's a specialist. Uh, the front offices seem to be overwhelmed. It's hard to even get through to them. And I've had to deal with some older relatives who have had recent medical issues, and sometimes just getting through the front offices takes forever. It'll speak to the dynamic about uh, policy approaches between Republicans and what uh, Senator Pasadoma wants to see happen. And Democrats you argue, well, if you're so worried about it, you all should have been much more Republican supportive on the Medicaid front, where they feel that uh, there's been a lot of money and a lot of effort left on the table. That'll be an interesting part of that dynamic, I suspect, this year. A continued interesting part of it. Well, the interesting thing is that uh, the legislature is determined to continue not ex allowing Medicaid in the state, which is aimed toward helping, you know, uh, disadvantaged families. It particularly helps helps kids in disadvantaged families. Uh, but they're saying we don't need the federal government program. We'll create our own program. And they're leaving billions of dollars on the table that comes out of Flor Florida taxpayers' pockets that'll go simply go to other states. And the Republican argument, we don't want to be left on the hook when the federal well dries up uh, on Medicaid. So that debate is one that we will continue to follow. And Brian, abortion politics, how will that move the electorate this year. So you have an effort to get uh, an amendment on the ballot here for abortion rights advocates. You have a Republican representative in Miami who wants to eliminate any exceptions, uh, rape or incest and for abortion. That seemed to get a very cool reception from Republican leadership in Tallahassee. Very cool. You have the ongoing court debate over the 15-week ban on abortion abortion politics as they move the voters this year. And that has, of course, real world impact on what it will mean for, let's say, a Joe Biden or the Republican candidate, a Donald Trump or a Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, wh whomever. Yeah, I think abortion will turn out to be a fairly big issue uh, in this election. Uh, I think the economy will still be first. We may have other world affairs that may mm -hmm. push things aside. The world seems to be changing rapidly right mm -hmm. now. But abortion is certainly going to be in the top three. I think that's one of the reasons why the Florida legislature is kind of taking a hands-off approach right now. That doesn't mean in a session next year they may not try to do more. It'll be interesting. They've gotten nearly a million signatures on a petition to remove the abortion uh, restrictions that the state enacted in a, through a constitutional amendment. Uh, that would go before the voters in November if the Florida Supreme Court says grace over the over the proposed language of the amendment. So we'll see if it gets on the ballot, it will be a big draw for Democrats and independents and, and Republicans who oppose uh, restrictive abortion laws to, uh, to go out there and vote in favor of this amendment. We only have very limited time in this segment. We'll follow it more, but uh, an effort afoot that uh, advocates for tighter restrictions on guns after Parkland say will weaken it on waiting periods, to cut that waiting period back. Is that something you suspect will sail through the Republican control? Yeah, somebody's watching too many John Wayne movies. Uh, we really don't want to have a point in this state where people are strapping guns to their waist and walking up and down the streets, because that's the other part of the move, open carry. Uh, we want to eliminate all pre-checks and everything else. That's it starts getting silly. We'll continue to follow that topic and much more. Your closing thoughts when we come back.